This conference will now be recorded. Well, I think we can just go ahead and start. That's all good with everybody. Um, I'm Tim Johnson, chair of the uh, North Oak Focus Group. We want to call this meeting to order. I would like to, I think everybody here knows this about everybody. Ross will give you a chance to introduce yourself a little bit. Um, when we uh, talk about your stuff you're gonna talk to us about. Um, so if I could uh, have someone get an approval of, of last month's meeting min minutes. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, okay, sounds good. The only thing that I'd like to point out, Ed, and not to embarrass you, but you keep spelling my name. So if you can make sure in the future we get my name still right, that'd be great. Thanks. Uh, okay. Hey. Yeah, I've, I've seen it spelled with a T and sometimes not, so I've been trying to, I will fix that. I apologize. That's okay. All right. Um, let's get the KCPD update. Mr. Officer Jones. Uh, afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'll just go ahead and just uh, make this pretty brief today. Um, I'll go ahead and start off with our uh, aggravated assaults. Um, and when I, when I, I'll tell you right now, with these stats this month, I've done uh, the North Patrol and the Shoal Creek side. Uh, Lance is um, on vacation right now, and I didn't know if anybody from North Patrol would be in attendance, so I went ahead and just did both uh, uh, both sides of the corridor. Um, we had a total of three aggravated assaults. A um, little alarming, but um, the biggest one was uh, we had a uh, drive-by shooting at uh, one of our problem houses. Uh, it is still it is still under investigation right now. Um, we're working on a few other things in, in that area as well. Um, our other two aggravated assaults, basically they were people getting hit with cell phones during arguments. Uh, so it's, uh, one of the, uh, those two wasn't, they weren't random acts. I'm just going to get down to, um, our, the biggest concern is our, is our property crimes. So uh, we had, you know, let's see, 12 theft from autos. And a lot of them were, um, concentrated in our, uh, multi-family uh, complexes. The thing that struck out struck uh, me the most was uh, it's a lot of these were uh, during uh, daylight hours. So what that says to me, and there's really no pattern other than that. So what that says to me is, it's, uh, you know, uh, acts of, or uh, crimes of opportunity, basically. And then um, our stolen autos, a lot of them were just attempt stolen autos. Um, there's real when you look at them through crimereports.com, a lot of times they'll show up as a stolen auto. You have to actually get in there and look at the reports and determine that it was an attempt uh, stolen auto. Those were uh, actually 10 of those over there. And uh, property crimes is looking, our property crime section is looking at that and they have a couple of ideas on who may be responsible. Um, this is a great opportunity to uh, remind folks again, just, uh, you know, help us help you basically uh, keep, um, you know, lock up, you know, basically uh, make sure your cars are locked. Make sure those garage door openers are inside. That's a big thing. Um, also, uh, take any valuables inside don't, or don't leave the valuables out in the open. That's, you know, that, that's that's usually uh, a lot of uh, our contributing factors there. Yeah, let's see. Bill, did you have anything? Um, not really. I mean, the only thing that I would probably want to make sure the group kind of is aware of is that we are working all those issues that Rick is talking about. And we've also discussed about some of the other issues along the North Oak going all the way up through uh, Cookingham and some of the connectors that are involving the problems with our uh, our bus systems. And Rick, if you could kind of elaborate on, on what we discussed before. Okay, so um, right now, about a month ago, we got a, we got a, we had a concern come in from uh, Gashlin Elementary. Um, there was a uh, patch of um, brush that backed up to the school. They were having issues with it, backed up to their playground. Um, we uh, worked together. We approached. Uh, it was. It was. It was uh, actually to be on the Walgreens uh, property. So we approached them, got a lot of that trimmed back. But what we um, during all this, it, this was a good time for us to really look at what's you know what's going on at that intersection. What's what? Why do we have a large number of transients? that uh, migrate there i mean we see we see them at all you know all of our major intersections but just uh it just seems like for some reason there you know we 
that was one of our larger migration points. So we, we looked at we looked at the area. This is one thing as community interaction officers. What we do is we start looking at the environment. Why you know why why are we seeing such an increase in the in the issues at a, at this particular location? So we started looking at our businesses that sell the single serve alcoholic beverages. We started looking at um, uh, we started you know we started looking at um opportunities to uh, set up uh, a lot of times just the, the homeless camps and we have uh, a lot of commercial property up there this time of year it's uh it's overgrown to the point to where anybody could set up something and pretty much be uh go undetected and then also we have some of the businesses up there they're uh, you know they, they don't they might not necessarily understand what their um, what their rights and what their parameters are as far as being able to um, um move folks along that might be um just loitering on the property per se. So we're we're in the process where we're putting uh, together a couple of uh, educational um, components, and we're pushing we're uh, going to be pushing those out to the to the neighborhoods first of all. Um, the educational component is going to be as far as uh, why you know how how to give to you know those in need, um, you know such as donating to uh, you know some of our five hundred one c threes like the you know um, like Salvation Army, some of our other uh, charitable organizations, and not necessarily. Uh, um, giving donate giving money to the people who are soliciting out at the intersections uh, we're uh, going to look to look uh, work with our PTAs and our booster clubs to take the to take that information back to the neighborhoods um, we're going to be working with our youth and we're going to be looking to work with the youth and vision with the school district and to put together some uh, educational components to take to our businesses that uh, sell um, that are uh, that sell a lot of the uh, single serve uh, alcoholic beverages because that's that's a huge thing out there right now is um you know when we go into these homeless camps or we just go to the bus stops even or just on the streets we see the empty containers we see the litter out there and then we're, we're also going to be working with those um you know with, with those uh, management companies on the properties to you know uh, come up with a, a long-term maintenance plan early in this you know early in the growing season if not before to uh cut down and hopefully prevent the uh, brush from being able to grow up to the point to where it's not going to be able to accommodate those homeless camps so easily. And then we're also going to work with uh, some of the, with the management companies as far as setting up a, uh, you know, good, solid uh, trespassing um, protocols. So when, you know, when these, you know, when our transients are just loitering at these businesses, they're not frequenting the businesses. They're just, they're, they're not really frequenting the businesses. They're just there to loiter for whatever reason, you know, to, you know, to make it to where, um, uh, it's it's not uh, as attractive for them to be there, and then we're also going to be looking to uh, bring the uh, ATA into the mix as well to figure out um, what we can be doing to um, address uh, any uh, concerns that maybe the that may be associated with the uh, bus lines. So I mean, it's a it's a long term project. It's not something that uh, we're you know we're we're going to start seeing results with you know, by, you know, by the end of, uh, you know, by, by the end of next month or anything like that, this is, this is something that it's, it does, it does take time for, you know, for, if we're going to address it the way we, we want to address it. But I, my, my idea is to put together the blueprint to figure out what works, what doesn't work. And this is, this would be a plan that we could take on the road, so to speak, you know, not just here in the Northland, but citywide even. So that's a little bit what we're working on right now. And, um, we'll just, uh, you know, we're, we're, uh, just, uh, Kind of figuring out what you know. Uh, we're just figuring out a lot, a lot of the, um, a lot of the behind the scenes right now. But that's kind of what we have going on right now. Bill, hey, Rick, anything? this is Tammy. Hey, this Tammy. This is Tammy Henderson. Hi. Can you give any kind of location, geographic location, where that drive-by shooting was? Uh, it was in the it was in the six uh, six thousand block of Northeast Forty Second Terrace. There, right about Forty Second Terrace in North Holmes. It was literally oh, down from the uh, school, Tammy. And if you oh remember, was the house where I was doing extra patrols during the summer because yep. there was an event that happened there and the school resource officer was involved. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. It's the same house, Tammy. We're working it. Oh, great. Uh, different agencies that are working that house. Um, okay. It's one of those ones that definitely the school resource officers know about and the school yeah. knows about. It's an eyesore and it's something that we mm -hmm. definitely have. No, I know exactly where you're talking about. It, right. it's, that's okay. the one. That's the one. All right. The homeowner had passed away, and she inconveniently willed everything to her grandson. So he's uh, made it into a den of iniquity. Lovely. Thank you. Any other questions for Officer Jones or Keeney? 
All right. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it so much. No problem, Tim. Um, to, uh, Ross Grundison from the KC, or excuse me, from the uh, <laughs> KCFD. Get too many initials here. Um, Ross, I, I was hoping you were going to speak to at, um, Station 40. Is that what's on your agenda today? Great. If you could just give us your update and go from there. And uh, Ross, you're muted just so you know, but I've got a quick question before you begin. Uh, there were two attachments that I was sent. One ends with without station 40 and one says with station 40. Do you want me to open one of those first? Uh, yeah, sure. You can probably do it with with station 40 first. I just want to say everybody's aware that station 40 was shut down last year. Um, the apparatus was moved over to the new station 15. We did have some uh, problems with that Station 40 even be habitable due, due to a sewer problem, things like that. Then due to budgetary cuts, it wasn't opened as quickly as we planned. Um, we did get a grant to cover the staffing for that station. So we are now currently in the process. And in fact, I've got a meeting at 1.30 um, just to go over the details of that. So we are looking to get some PIAC money uh, from both districts one, two, and four that will hopefully um, speed this process up. We did get the sales tax passed and that would have been our intent, would it be to take some money from there, but that goes into 2021. And you know we want to get this open as soon as possible. So this map right here shows that, uh, oh, I suppose it's a tannish color right in the center. You see that station 40, that's their primary service area, their first in area. And that's a pretty big, uh, big service area. And then that's their four minute response time. Okay. So now just take a good look at that. And you look at that right there in the center of the station 40. And I'll put up the one that says without station 40. Uh, Ross, you'd like me to do that now? Sure. Yep. Okay. I'm going to turn off screen sharing for just a second while I open that up. And for everybody who's watching, you may notice that when the screen is shared, the view is a little small because there's a row of video windows along the top of your uh, GoToMeeting window. There is a, a thin gray line that separates those, um, those video windows with the shared screen. And you can click and drag that line upward to give yourself a little bit larger viewing area for this screen share. Uh, so I've almost got this ready to pull up here. All right. Folks should be able to see it now. Okay, so now, now there were 40s used to be, now there's just a bunch of white area, and that means we don't have the four minute response time that we want there. Um, you know, that's not acceptable to us, and we're doing everything we can to get that open back up because those folks in that primary service area, just the uh, bottom line is they don't have the coverage that they that they should have and that we strive to, to deliver. And so, we are currently working on that. We had the architects in station 40 um, yesterday, just reviewing the plans that had already been drawn up and uh, just looking at, we did have a break in there and there was some graffiti, um, you know, painted inside the, the station. Not, not a huge deal, but there's a certain amount of disrepair. There's a hundred thousand uh, dollar price tag on getting the sewer hooked up. That system in the past has been run off a septic system that was just woefully inadequate. Um, the basement used to flood on a fairly regular basis with uh, just raw sewage, honestly. And so that was another obstacle but obstacle that we had to overcome with getting this, and it's just addition to the cost. I think we've put the price tag on that remodel at about 900,000, between eight and 900,000, 100 of that being the, um, the sewer system. So like I said, I've got a meeting at 1.30 where we're gonna go and just lay out the timeline on this. We had the contractors in there and got the bid on the asbestos uh, removal for the bunk room there's still some tile in there that has asbestos and it'll get a you know we're hoping to get a kitchen remodel bunk room bathrooms for the gender neutral and just give it a good once over there's also some concrete work that needs to be done in the front and some work on the apron things like that to be ada compliant um, but the goal would be to fill that map in and give those primary service area. There is also another issue that we deal with on the fire department. So obviously we strive for a four minute response time anywhere in the city with a fire apparatus, but we also shoot for a eight minute response time in order, to, a eight minute response time 
to get 15 people or more on the scene, like in the event of a fire or something like that. And so this is where it really affects even more, more so more of the city than just that, that first in district. And so you end up, ex especially on the going to the, uh, the west side over in 44's district there, uh, up that I-29 corridor with 40's missing, we have a hard time getting the 15 people there within eight minutes, you know, in the event of a larger event, that area really lacks. And honestly, it's a scattered a little bit throughout the uh, east side of the, the Northland district too. And so it truly does affect our operations as a whole in the Northland. So um, to basically make up for that, um, you know, we, we aren't able to occupy 40s now because of the condition, but we have posted ambulance, an ambulance at station six, which you didn't have before. We also have an ambulance and, and pumper at station 34. Um, and so those are the stations that surround them. It's station four at 40th or 4,000 Northwest 64th Street. Then we've got station six at 2600 Northeast Parvin. We've got 34s at 48th and Brighton, and then 38s at 81st and North Oak. We do also occasionally use uh, mutual aid with Gladstone um, and occasionally Riverside. Um, that's not, you know, it doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen. But we did put an ambulance, additional ambulance at sixes, which we didn't have before. And then we also are using the ambulance at station four on 64th Street. And we've identified both those, both those stations as high priority posts, meaning if uh, they catch a call, we send up another ambulance to replace them. And a lot of times you may have even seen an ambulance sitting on the apron at 40s. They're not allowed to go in, but we still do occasionally post an ambulance in that area. You know, um, and so we're trying to cover the best we can. We also uh, change the protocol so that that ambulance at station four and 64th Street and the one down on Parvin station six don't run non-emergency calls. And that's a, you know, our system runs, oh, I'd say probably, you know, up to 20% of our call volume can be non-emergency transfers and stuff from nursing homes to hospitals and back and forth, things like that. And those two units there, we've identified them as uh, emergency only ambulances, basically just so that they're available more to that area that they service that's not covered now by, by 40s being out of service. So I'll know more about the time frame of that. Um, we did get a commitment. Uh, we're getting a commitment in today from uh, uh, District 2 on some leftover PIAC money. And then we're also in uh, talks with districts one and four, and it sounds like they probably will be coming through with some money too. So we're really hoping to get going on this station in the next couple of weeks and giving it a, you know, a hard press to get things back in service there. So that's pretty encouraging. We were thinking we were probably going to have to wait, you know, get into the next year and start letting that sales tax money roll in. And we're hoping now that that it'll this will expedite it a little bit. Great. That sounds great, Ross. I appreciate it. Is I have a question though. Is the plan when 40 does reopen, is the plan to have a ambulance and a fire truck, a pumper truck there? That will probably move. That has not been decided. The funding didn't allow for the ambulance. It does allow for the fire truck. So the fire truck for sure will be there. We'll probably move that ambulance from sixes up to forties would be my bet. Or it's okay. possible we could put an EMS supervisor in there and they would be able to first respond also at the ALS capacity like an ambulance does. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. If you could yeah. um, keep posted on or keep Ed at NNI posted um, sure. if you hear any updates in the next couple of weeks and uh, then Ed can pass it out to uh, email all of us uh, regarding that. That would be greatly appreciated. Will do. Yeah, we should have a good idea how things will go probably by the end of next week. Great. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time today. Is there you any bet. other questions for us real quick? He's got to leave here in a minute. One, six, four, okay, hearing none. Five. Thank you so much, Ross. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, any other business that we want to talk about today, guys? Anybody got anything else they want to bring up regarding North Oak or what's good, good news, bad news, indifferent news? How's the school district coming along, Tammy? Are you oh my holding gosh, your breath? We got, we got to go back to school this week. <laughs> <laughs> We're so excited. Um, 
we had a great first day. We've had a great second day, and now we're on our third day. Um, we have about 28% of our students choosing to go virtual. The rest are in school. Um, Elementary-wise, they're going five days a week, and six through 12, uh, A through K, letters A through K go Monday and Tuesday. Letters L through Z go uh, Thursday and Friday, and Wednesday is a day for teacher collaboration and some extra special cleaning. We have had football games for two weeks without a problem. And so we're really happy. We have a lot of, of criteria we use um, to kind of determine what we can do going forward in concert with both Clay County and Kansas City, Missouri Health. And from what we're hearing from medical officers all over the city and everybody else, wash your hands, wear your mask and socially distance whenever possible. So we are holding tight to that. and hopefully we can continue to see um, our kids in school. They're so happy to be there and their teachers are so happy to have them back. So it's it's been good. Hey, I have a question. I don't know that I got to come last month, but is there an update on the Bank of America building um, there at 42nd North Oak? I'll let Ed okay, handle it. <laughs> that doesn't look good. <laughs> um. Thank you, Tim. Um, at the last conversation I had with Mo, who owns the property, um, he realizes now he's not going to be able to do a car dealership there, which is what he kind of wanted to do. Um, he is holding off on doing anything more to the property until after COVID. And um, he said there's just not a lot of demand for a retail spot. He had the DMV from MoDOT uh, contact him about that site as a potential office for them. Uh, I encouraged him to continue the conversation with them. That would be a good use for that space. Um, so that's really all I've heard. Um, he and I had talked about some of the issues with crime and the break-ins and um, I told him I would have Officer Lance follow up with him to do a survey of the building. Officer Lance did follow up, but um, Mo did not return the phone call. So that's kind of the last, or what I've heard this month from Lance, but that's where we are at the moment. Okay. okay. All right. Thanks. Um, Tammy, I just wanted to tell you, I am you know, work with a lot of different school districts, and I'm, I'm a little biased to North Kansas City School District, but I got to say, you guys have hit it out of the park as far as the preparation, um, you know, taken over last spring when you had, a, they went to spring break and all of a sudden they never came back. But everything got on board virtually. This started this year from what I said, I've been in a lot of the schools so in the last month or so, and everyone is really, really excited. Um, I'm hearing good things from staff and okay. I just wanted to pass okay. that on to you that you guys did a great job. So keep it up and we'll keep, I'll keep our fingers crossed that we don't Thank get any, you so uh, much. you know, people it's there. kind of, shocking when you think we have not had kids in our schools for 178 days that's a school year that is an entire school year and, and it's been 178 days since our teachers have been back with their kids so yeah please keep your fingers crossed and us in your prayers because we want to keep that going <laughs> you got it all right anything else for anybody has any questions or concerns hey Tim yes Joe what, what, the uh, roundabout there on Parvin Road, what is that estimate to be done? I I do not know that information. Ed, do you have any information on that? Or Officer Jones, are you familiar with that? Okay. I think it was originally supposed to be a four-month project, but I don't know exactly when it started. I, I didn't hear the whole question. What was the question? It was about um, the time frame on the roundabout on Parvin. Oh, I have not gotten an update on that. I It started in, I want to say like July, middle of July. Um, so that would be November probably. Yeah. I have a feeling it will be. Uh, it looks like they're making some pretty good progress, but I can't, I mean, it's tough getting over onto North, on, onto North Oak from our office because I've got to go around. So I, I am constantly hoping that I can go through that direction, but uh, so far we're not allowed. So um, have not seen any more changes. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. But I can find out. I'll see if I can find out. All right. Jocelyn, you've been quiet today. Do you have anything to add to our meeting? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. No, I don't. There's nothing. Um, it's just a rainy day, man. Just thinking about basements, thinking about sump pumps. Right. Well, I'm thinking yeah. about chips. So, <laughs> what are you thinking about? Peace. Peace to football tonight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I knew that was hey, today. Everybody. I did know that yep. was today. Um, well, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, we'll see you next month and um, have a good week. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Uh, hey, hey, real quick. Um, Bill just found it on the MoDOT site uh, in regards to Spartan Prey. They're, they're, they're projecting mid November for our completion date as of right now. Good. Hey, I right. guess that's almost right. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. Appreciate it. No problem. No problem, guys. Thank you. And I'll talk to you in a minute. Bye. Yep. Take care.